we, uh, we are very, very grateful for our community development corporations and uh, a lot of what we'll discuss here and talk about here are built on the backs of these organizations. These organizations are, uh, are built on the backs of other activists and organizers who stood in the, in the, in the fire lines and, uh, and built Newark uh, as we know it here, or rebuilt Newark as we know it today. Uh, we have two parts to our, uh, our discussion tonight. The first is the historical context, uh, and those participating in that, in the first panel, is uh, Becky Doggett, <coughs> uh, Nancy Zack, and Richard Camerari. And I don't think Richard is here yet, right? Yeah. Not yet. I'm sure Ray Ocasio will step in for anyone who's missing. <laughs> oh, did I tell you he used to be my boss at LISC? <laughs> this is what we call payback. Exactly. <laughs> you can tell the check later. Too. Okay, all right, we'll do that. Um, I was told that everybody will, the, the panelists will introduce themselves, so the, those involved in the first panelists, in the first panel will introduce themselves, and I'll be back to um, help with questioning. Thanks, Gerard. Evening, everyone. Good evening. Good to see you all for the rain and the cold. Yesterday was like a spring day, and I don't know what happened. Um, <clears throat> my name is Becky Doggett, and uh, I'm a founding member of Tri-City Citizens Union for Progress, uh, which was officially incorporated back in 1968. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk about that history. I no longer I am on the staff or board of Tri-City. There are a couple of uh, young folks here who, who are from Tri-City People's <coughs> Corporation, and I'm sure they can bring us up to date on the exciting things that they're doing now. But what I wanted to focus on um, uh, were the uh, historical origins of um, Tri-City Citizens Union for Progress. Um, and there were two, really two main uh, major events that were happening uh, here in Newark that uh, helped this organization emerge. And I'm sure all of you are wondering, what were the three cities? Well, the three cities eventually uh, were Newark, Jersey City, and Patterson. We were very ambitious young people in those days. <laughs> we were going to take on the whole world. But the two major events that were happening at the time, there was a, a national debate going on about community organizing around the country. Saul Alinsky was uh, really doing an effective job in Chicago, and his movement was spreading across the country. And then there was also another um, debate going on about whether we in Newark should go the Saul Alinsky way of community organizing, or whether we should go towards the more of the black self-development uh, method that was, eventually became the black power movement. The second uh, issue that was uh, very much uh, broiling here in Newark at that time was the furor in the community about the displacement of people from the heart of the Central Ward being uh, moved out of their homes to clear land for the building of the medical school. And if you remember at the beginning, Merida Nizio had promised 150 acres of land. Uh, so those two events were sort of swirling around in Newark uh, in the late 60s, and um, it was really the Episcopal Diocese of Newark that brought together some people to talk about which form of community organizing should we engage in here in Newark. Um, the Jersey City folks, uh, Father Castle and some other people, were much more interested in the Saul Alinsky approach. Uh, however, one of the key executives of the Episcopal Diocese of Newark at that time was Dr. Nathan Wright. And Nathan Wright was more from the black self-empowerment movement. And so we have these very interesting debates and conversations back and forth about which way should we go. And at the same time, now this is 19, early 1967, uh, we're having these conversations. And because of Nathan Wright's prominence, he was able to convince the national black power movement people to host the first black power conference in Newark. And the date that was going to be set was July 1967. So you can imagine, this black power conference was going to take place a week 
after the civil rebellions had started. And of course, everybody was trying to convince Nathan Wright and the others not to go ahead with the, having the Black Power Conference. But it did take place. And uh, Dr. Wright continued to be very active on the national level. Those of us who were more local, however, started to think about, well, how are we going to operationalize this idea of, of, of self-empowerment? And we came up with the idea of the three-city approach. And each city was going to uh, identify some major issues in their own town, Newark in its, Jersey City, and Patterson. Each of us were going to identify the issues that we wanted to tackle. And uh, here in Newark, we began to really understand what was happening with the displacement of people in the Central Ward uh, for the medical school. And so we in Newark decided that we should look at the whole issue of affordable housing. Affordable housing uh, for the people who are being displaced, but also more importantly, um, trying to come up with a model of neighborhood preservation. Um, we were naive then. We didn't understand what a national phenomenon was going on with the use of federal monies and under urban renewal for massive displacement of people. We thought we were the only ones with the problem. And so what we thought we could do is to develop a model for neighborhood preservation. So we started in the West Side Park area of Newark and we said, well, if we could rehab these houses, in like a 20 or 30 square block area and show the, the, the city that you can uh, have affordable housing by, and not change the character of the neighborhood uh, in doing it. That we don't have to wipe out whole communities and build brand new houses for people to have a good place to live. And so that was the whole concept of, of forming what became um, the Amity Village Housing uh, Development Program and uh, also the Tri-City People's uh, Corporation. And those two entities were really the first time in, um, uh, in the state government, the, the financing by the Department of Community Affairs. This was even before the Housing Mortgage Finance Agency was in existence. Uh, this was the first time that the state was funding, not only funding um, housing rehab in a community of Newark, but also uh, helping to underwrite the cost of having uh, social services. Uh, we purchased a church building and put uh, daycare and after school programs in it. And it was unheard of in the, with the housing people that they were supposed to do that as well as put up uh, you know, bricks and mortar. And we said, well, that's the problem with public housing. No one ever did that. And that uh, housing needs to have uh, community services, family support services, along with the bricks and mortar. And out of that came um, the whole idea of Tri-City People's Corporation. A few months later, a new community corporation was formed. And new community, of course, has become an excellent large model, large scale model, of how those comprehensive services uh, have to work together. So that was, that was really what, what began uh, that movement. It was um, sort of being caught in the, the furor and the, and the excitement of what was going on nationally. But what we did was look at, well, how is this going to impact us on the local level? And what could we, you know, as ordinary people on the local level do to make something happen for, for people in Newark? And um, just a sequel, unfortunately, the Jersey City chapter and the, and the Patterson chapters got caught up in some of the local uh, political uh, um, controversies in their towns. And those two chapters never did get off the ground uh, to any great extent. So it was really only the Newark sector of, of Tri-City um, that really flourished. Uh, Tri-City People's Corporation is still uh, active today, has broadened the scope of, of the work that they do, and um, is still a very active, viable corporation um, here in the city of Newark. So we feel that we laid some excellent groundwork and uh, so the legacy goes on, and um, we hope that uh, there'll be many more years of Tri-City People's Corporation. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. And we're going to hold all the questions after um, the two panel presentations have been completed.